Hello everyone, welcome back to another exciting After Effects tutorial. I hope you like this cinematic intro inspired by the Superman trailer, which was recently launched on YouTube. And I'm so excited to show you how I recreated it. So, without further ado, let's get started. Alright, let's create a new composition. Name this Comp Main Comp. You can see the rest of the settings on the screen. First, I select the text tool to add our title. For your reference, I use the Montserrat font and you can see the rest of the settings on the screen. After that, align the text to the center and duplicate this layer. Place it below the first layer and rename it as Text Outline. Then go to Layer Style and choose Stroke. Open the Stroke settings. First. Change the size to 1.5, then change the color. For your reference, use this color code for accuracy. After that, change the text color to black. Next, open the Opacity property and add a keyframe. Change the value to 0%, then go to 130 seconds and set it to 100%. Copy both keyframes and paste them onto the first layer. This gives you a smooth fade-in animation for the text. After that, pre-compose layer 2 and name this comp Text Outline and make sure to check this box. It's time to add a glow effect to this layer. After applying it, you can see the edges are glowing. Then select both layers and pre-compose them. Name it Text Holder, check this box and click OK. Once again, add a glow effect to this layer and go to the Effect Controls panel. Now change the glow threshold to 75% and the glow radius to 400. Our basic text design is ready. Now I'll show you the pro trick. Go to the text outline composition and drag this panel here so we can see two timelines in one view. Then in the text outline comp, open the text outline properties. Under this, you'll find text source. You'll find the same text source in our main text layer. So simply open that as well. Now. Carefully hold Alt on the keyboard and click the stopwatch to open the expression window. Then click the Pick Whip icon and drag it to the original text source and release it. Now the text outline layer is linked to our original text. I'll explain why I did this later. For now, select the text outline comp and place it back here. All right. Now, if I edit this text, the outline text automatically updates because both are linked. That's the benefit of this trick. Next, go back to the main comp and select the layer. Go to Layer Style and add Satin. Open Satin Properties and change the angle to 27. Then change distance to 31, size to 24, and invert to off. This gives the text a nice look. Let's see the RAM preview. One more important thing I want to show you. I'm using 16-bit color depth to get better colors. If you wish, you can use 8-bit as well. Alright, let's move forward. First, I hide this layer for now, then I add a solid layer called star. Make sure the color of the solid is white. After that, I add an effect called CC Star Burst. Simply apply it to the layer. Let's see the settings for this effect. Change grid spacing to 5. Change size to 20. Scatter value around 180. Change speed to negative 0.03. 
change phase to 24. Now preview. It looks good. We've almost recreated the same zoom out effect seen in the Superman trailer. Now animate the opacity of this star layer to get a smooth fade in effect. Just easy ease the first keyframe for a smoother reveal. Then I pre-compose this layer and name it star. Let's move forward and add another solid layer called ball lines. Once again, add the CC starburst effect to this layer and change the settings. Grid spacing to 32, size to 20. Scatter value around 120. Speed around 0.11. Phase around 283. It should now look like this. Next, go back to the first frame and add a keyframe on scatter. Then move the time indicator to 350 seconds and change the scatter value to 155. Then add a four color gradient effect to this layer Change the colors accordingly and adjust its points randomly. Then add another effect called Fast Box Blur and apply it to the layer. Change Blur Radius to 740. Set Blur Dimensions to Vertical. So now you can see those lines, but they look faded. So add a Curves effect to this layer. Then, change the channel to Alpha. Now pay attention. When I lift this point upward, the colors and visibility improve. I'll leave it at this point for now. Next, pre-compose this layer and name it Upper Ball CC. Now go to the Project panel, select this layer and duplicate it. Rename the duplicate as Lower Ball CC both into the comp and open them. Now we can change the colors however we like from here. We can also adjust the color pins if needed. Now go back to the main composition and solo this layer. Then I select the Rectangle tool and create a mask like this. Open the Mask Properties and increase the Feather to around 215 to get this look. Then repeat the process with the upper layer to match. You can preview how it looks. Both layers are very close to each other and slightly misaligned, so I align them correctly. Now it looks good. Let's lock all the layers and move forward to the next step. To make spike lines, I first select the Rectangle Shape tool. I'm using red color for this one. Then I simply make a rectangle in the composition and rename this layer red. Then I add an effect called Linear Wipe. Apply it to the layer. Go to the settings. Set transition completion to 50%. Set feather to around 700 to 900. Adjust the values of both properties until you get the desired look. After that, add another effect called Block Dissolve. Set transition completion to 70%. Set block width to 960. Add a keyframe on block width. Move the indicator to 230 seconds and set the value to 1873. Let's see the preview. It looks good. You can see the smooth movement of these spikes. Lastly, Change the block height to 3 to make it better. 
then select the rectangle tool and make sure this icon is checked. Add a mask like this. I also increase the size of the shape so it looks wider. Open the mask properties and increase the feather. Now it looks perfect. Next, pre-compose this layer and name it Lower Red Thin Lines. Check the box and click OK, then rotate this layer 90 degrees and align it like this. Now turn on the rest of the layers to check how it looks. It's a bit narrow, so I increased the width slightly. Then go to the project panel, duplicate this layer and rename it Upper Blue. Drag it into the composition and align it as before. But this time, go inside the comp and change the color to blue. After that, link the upper and lower ball CC layers like this. Then select both layers, open position properties and animate the position to get this look. The lines animation looks really good. Now, to spice it up, we can add glow effects on both layers. To make a fake light effect, select the ellipse tool and create a shape like this. Then search for an effect called Gaussian Blur Legacy and apply it. Rename this layer as Upper Light. In the settings, change Blurriness to 400. This gives a nice fake light look. You can also adjust its opacity to get the perfect effect. After that, parent it to the upper ball CC. Then duplicate this light layer, place it below the comp, change its color, and parent it to the lower ball CC. Now it's time to turn on the text layer. Make this layer a 3D layer Adjust its final position and add a keyframe. Go back to the first frame and change the Z value to animate it. This will give you a zoom out effect. Next, I'm going to add a flare, which you can download from the link in the description below. After importing it into the timeline, scale it down a bit to match the title and place it below the text. Then go to Effects Panel and search for Color Blue Wash and apply it. In the settings, change the hue to negative 206 or something that matches your text color. After that, make this layer 3D then parent it to the text layer. Next, animate the opacity of the flare to get this look. Now I import a flare footage, which you can also download from the description below. Just add it to the timeline and change its blending mode to screen to achieve this look. Let's see the final render. So that's how I recreated the Superman title intro in After Effects. If you enjoyed this video and want to support the channel, consider buying me a coffee. Your support makes a big difference and helps me keep creating awesome content. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.